Okay, so do you want to learn how to actually work out a loan using your GDC? Stay tuned. Okay, so today we are going to go through questions eight and nine from the Revision Village mock paper. Before we get started, it's going to be my random shout out to Muhammad Saeed. So congratulations, Muhammad. You have got the random shout out today. If you'd like a chance to get a random shout out, then please press that like and subscribe button. It goes a long way to support the channel. Right, let's get stuck into questions eight and nine. Okay, so Mehmet organizes a graduation party on the bait boat in the Strait of Istanbul. Sounds very nice for his peers from college. And the cost to rent a large boat for the evening is 5,000 Turkish lira. And the cost to hire a DJ is 1,500 Turkish lira. And the cost for food and drinks is estimated to be 125 Turkish lira per person. We want to find an expression for the total cost, which is why in Turkish lira, of the evening in terms of the number of peers attending the party. So our total cost will be equal to the fixed costs, the ones that do not change, or have not changed, depending on number of people, plus the variable costs. A little bit of economics in this question about fixed cost and variable costs, like so. So we need to work out how many fixed costs we have here. Well. We need to rent the large boats, that's 5,000, and we need to hire the DJ, so we're going to need to add those together. So 5,000 plus 1,500, and then plus, well this is going to depend on the number of people attending the party, the X. So it's 125 per person, so we need to then work out 125 X extra. So for example, X was two, if there were two peers attending the party, then the food and drinks would cost 125 times two, 250. Um, if it was five people attending, 125 times five, and so on. So our general expression, our total cost, which we want to use the letter Y, is going to equal the fixed costs, which if we add this together is 6,500. 6, plus 125x, and we have our two marks. Fantastic. Let's now look at part B. So we want to find the total cost of the evening if 40 peers attend the party. So we've got now got x to be 40, because that represents the number of people. So when x is equal to 40, the total cost, which is the function we made before y, will be equal to 6,500 plus 125 lots of 40. Now we could work this out um, using mental arithmetic or a multiplication method, but this is why we have our GDC. So we're going to put this into our GDC. And if we put this into our GDC, we have then the answer of 11,500 Turkish lira. So now we pop that back into our answer. And remember, it's always worth writing the units. So we've got Turkish lira, so we're going to write T-R-Y just like it is in the question. Okay, perfect. Okay, and part C, this is a little bit trickier. So given that Mehmet decides to collect 250 Turkish lira from each peer attending the party, find the least number of peers he has to invite to be able to cover the total cost of the evening. So we think, okay, well, how much money is going to come in? So we want the revenue, okay, to roughly equal the costs, yeah? So we want to find at what stage does the revenue equal costs? So let's work out the revenue, how much money coming in. Well, that's going to be 250 multiplied by how many peers attend the party. And we know there are X attending the party. So we know the revenue will equal 250X. The cost was the function that we looked at last time. So our fun uh, function from last time was 6,500 plus 125X. 
And at this stage here, we've now got a straightforward equation to solve. You could use your n solve function on your calculator. This will then generate the answer for you. But let's do this old school. So we want all the x's on one side. So what's the opposite of 125x? Well, we're going to minus 125x on both sides. So that this cancels with this. 250x minus 125x is 125x equals 6,500. And now what's the opposite of timesing by 125? We're going to divide by 125 on both sides of our equation. Now, we don't even need to do this uh, in our head or anything like that. We can now use our GDC. And this gives us the answer here of 52, which is the least number of people so to cover the, cover, to cover the total costs of the evening. Okay, so our answer will be 52. Again, you can check the mark scheme here and go through what I have talked through in this question. Okay, and now we're going to look at question 9, which is a loan question. Okay, so you should always read the question and consider what we're going to do. So Stella receives a loan of 32,000 euros for a flower shop business, an interest rate of 5.29% per year, compounded monthly. I've noticed on AISL, they generally put the compounding in bold. You need to think about what you're going to put into your GDC. She agrees to pay back the loan in 60 equal installments made, up at, made at the end of each month over the next five years. So we need to consider the end of each month over five years in 60 installments. So underlining the key parts of information here. And we work, need to work out the amount of the monthly installment. Okay. Let's keep going. So let's now think about what we're going to write into our GDC. So we need to think about our present value, our final value, our N, which I'll talk about later on, our I, our CPY, and our PMT. Now all these options are on your GDC. So that's what we're going to look at now. Okay, so from your normal calculator view, to get the finance solver, you need to click on menu, finance, and finance solver. And then you've got all the options that I wrote down in the previous part of the video. So now let's fill in what we know. Okay, so let's go through this one at a time and then think about what we actually know. So first of all, our present value is that we've got 32,000 euros, okay? That's what our loan is. And we want to get that loan down to zero, yeah? So you've paid off the entire loan. Now, one of the key things to recognize here is that N does not stand for the number of years, but it stands for the number of payments being made. So this here is going to be 60. We're going to be making 60 installments. And this is one of the real things to consider loans compared to doing compound interest. Our interest rate is 5.29. Our compounding is monthly. So compound per year is 12. There are 12 months in a year. And we're going to make monthly payments, monthly installments. Okay, so that's going to be our PPY, payments per year. It's going to equal 12. And the monthly payments we make is what we're looking for. So at this stage, we've got all the information from the question that we need, and now let's put it in our GDC. Okay, so I've now put all this into my GDC. N is 60, I is 5.29, PV is 32,000, um, FV is zero, the payments per year is 12, our compounding is also 12. Uh, we pay the monthly payments at the end of the month, so make sure you choose between end and begin. And all I do is press enter, on PMT here, and then I generate my correct answer. Do not worry about the minus, okay? Think about you're, you're paying it to the bank, therefore that's why it's a minus here. So we simply round this to the nearest cent, and as you can see here, the answer would be $608.14, sorry, 608 euros and 14 cents. Okay, so we write that answer down. 
and make sure we've rounded to the nearest cent. Okay, so the final part of the question is a little bit on the trickier side. So four years after she starts repaying the loan, Stella decides to repay the rest in a final single instalment. And we need to calculate the amount owing at the end of that four years. Okay, so we need to think about within that four years um, exactly what will be left owing afterwards. So let's fill in the information that we know so far. First of all, N is the number of payments. So we need to think how many payments have been made within those four years. Well, 12 times 4 is going to give us 48. Our monthly payments, so PMT, is exactly as we worked out in the previous question. So that's going to be 608.14. Okay, our present value, so what we started with, will be 32,000 euros. Okay, now the final value is what we want to work out. So we'll put a question mark by that. Uh, compounding, so CPY and PPY, payments per year, both stay the same. They haven't changed. They're still going to be 12. And our interest rate hasn't changed either. So that's still going to be 5.29. So let's put that into our GDC and let's see what we get for our final value. Okay, and if we put that information into our calculator, we'll then generate what is left here. So we'll still have 7,092 euros and 81 cents left. I think the issue here is that I've taken a more accurate answer than the mark scheme, so that's why it's going to be slightly different here. Okay, but you can see the same details have been put into my calculator. So we write that answer down for our part B. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed my walkthrough for questions eight and nine. I'll be continuing with this paper and looking at some of these much more difficult questions on the paper as well. Okay, bye-bye for now.